Today on Rat and Cat, cliffs that are serial killers and serial killers who use cliffs. <laughs> Welcome to Rat and Cat, where we search for those who've gone missing so others can learn how to survive. I'm Nakia. Today we're going to talk about killer cliffs. It's part of our series, Odd Ways People Die in the Wilderness and How to Avoid Them. Did you know that cliffs are actually the third leading cause of death in the wilderness? That's right behind drowning and heart failure. The cliffs seem like such an obvious danger that I almost thought maybe I shouldn't cover it. But as it turns out, there may be more mystery and hidden risks than you might think. I've been meaning to cover this topic for some time, but two stories in the news this last week caught my attention. First, there was the tragic story of the Hart family in Oregon who drove off a cliff in California on the coast and killed all eight in the family. Sadly, it looks like it might have been intentional. Secondly is the story of 25-year-old Nathan Stoll. He was hiking Hawaii's Olamana Trail when he reportedly fell hundreds of feet to his death. It was two Sundays ago. He was trying to grab his hat when he fell. As it turns out, some cliffs are serial killers. Evidently, Olamana Trail is notorious for its drop-offs and has claimed four lives since 2011. I'm standing up here at Cape Horn, overlooking the beautiful Columbia River Gorge. And there are cliffs everywhere here. And just about any direction I look, somebody has fallen off and died on one of these cliffs. Right down here beside me is the Cape Horn Overlook, where people will pull off the side of the road in their car and look, get up on the rock wall or step just over the edge and lose their footing and fall. And a number of people have died that way. Around the corner, suspected murder, suicide, accidental slips. Up the river, Beacon Rock. Rock climbers have fallen, uh, suspected murder. A man was convicted of murdering someone but then was later uh, convicted of murdering somebody else. They're pretty sure that was it. And then behind me, there's Angel's Rest. Unfortunately, Angel's Rest is also a killer hike for folks in Portland, Oregon. Anna Schmidt is one of the more recent well-known missing person cases there. In 2016, 21-year-old Schmidt went missing in the area. Her things were found in her car and there was no signs of foul play. It took several weeks before her body was finally discovered at the base of the cliffs below Angel's Rest. I'm not sure about the total number of people who have died falling off Angel's Rest, but just a quick search revealed that at least five people have died in the last five years. Why are they falling? One man who had been drinking simply tripped. Another man became lightheaded. He sat down on a rock and fell over. A woman at a nearby falls jumped after her toddler who simply slipped past a fence and tumbled down a bank. She couldn't stop on the embankment and fell to her death off a lower cliff. I'm actually surprised how many of these cliff related deaths are preventable and don't come from rock climbing or simply tripping. I have a friend from British Columbia, Canada who was on a camp out with a youth group when he was a kid. They were pushing boulders from the top of a cliff when the edge of the cliff gave way. The group of boys watched in horror as their leader fell more than 100 feet to his death. But some cliff fatalities are even more sinister. A tool used by serial killers, in fact. In 1981, Randy and Janice Roth were climbing Beacon Rock, Washington in the Columbia Gorge. During the climb, Janice mysteriously fell 300 feet to her death. Then in 1991, Randy's fourth wife somehow got trapped under a raft and died. Those who knew him became suspicious when he seemed to become calm and matter-of-fact about it and eager to cash in on a life insurance policy. He was convicted of murder of his wife and suspected of the Beacon Rock incident, but with no witnesses, no further charges were raised against him. You can read more about that mystery in a book called Fatal Charm by Carlton Smith. Now, what can you do to keep yourself safe around wilderness cliffs? Here are some tips. Be aware that some cliffs are hidden down banks or steep slopes, so take care even on moderate mountainsides. Don't drink or take drugs when you're on a hike. Try to get good sleep and don't overdo it so that you're sure-footed. Don't hike with people you've been fighting with or that could be a threat. Don't hike with people who take risks. 
take mountaineering courses to be more prepared for unexpected wilderness terrain. And always ask yourself, if I tripped right now, would I die? All right, that's it here for Rat and Cat. Remember, although it may be interesting and helpful to look at why people go missing, the risks are actually relatively low. There's a great big beautiful world out there to explore. Get out there, be safe, and have fun. Thank you.